Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. It's always a wonderful morning when we get to gather with the Lord's people to worship Him, to remember the great sacrifice of His Son, and to study a little bit from His Word. We're going to be studying beginning in 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, go ahead and turn there with me. We'll read there, we'll read there to begin our lesson. 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. The Apostle Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, writes this. 1 Peter 5 and verse 1. Therefore I exhort the elders among you, as your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ, and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God among you. Exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily, according to the will of God, and not for sordid gain, but with eagerness, nor yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge, but proving yourselves to be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd arrives, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. You know, we are in a season in our church where we are appointing additional shepherds over us, additional overseers, additional elders. And for that reason, we spent a great deal of time discussing elders and what it means to be an elder, to be an overseer in a local church. We have talked about, we've talked about the, 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 the qualities that an elder should possess. And we've talked a lot about the work that an elder should do. We talked about what it means that an elder in a local church is supposed to be like a shepherd. But I wonder, brothers and sisters, if we ever flip that coin over and consider the other side. We have talked a lot about what it means that an elder is a shepherd. But have we talked about what it means that you and I are like sheep? Do we ever think about that side of the relationship and what the Bible says about that? You know, that is the parallel that Peter draws in 1 Peter 5, verses 1 through 4. He talks to his fellow elders and those who are serving in their various congregations. And he tells them, you need to shepherd the flock of God that is among you. And that's us, right? We're, we're not the shepherds. We're the sheep. We're the flock. Just as the Bible has much to say about how elders should be like shepherds. It also has much to say about how Christians should be like sheep. Brothers and sisters, if they, if they're supposed to act like shepherds, that means that you and me, we're supposed to be like sheep. And so for a few moments this morning, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about acting sheepish, which thankfully some of you laughed at when you saw it. It is intended to be a little funny, so it's okay to laugh. But I want to talk to you about acting sheepish. I want to talk to you about, about acting like a sheep, actually fulfilling your role, not as a shepherd, but as one of the sheep that our shepherds watch over. But before we really dive into that, there's one thing that we've got to nail down first. One thing that we have to make very, very clear, that as sheep of this local flock here, we need to recognize that we serve a higher authority than the local elders of this church. We need to recognize that we listen to the voice of Jesus before we listen to the voice of our local shepherds. We are his sheep first. You'll notice Peter said that in 1 Peter 5 and verse 4, right? When he talked about how Jesus is the chief shepherd who is going to come back and he's going to give them an unfading crown of glory. That's who Jesus is. He is the chief shepherd. He is the main shepherd. He is the shepherd in charge of all of the sheep, including our local elders here. If you look in John 10 real quick, the gospel of John in chapter 10 in verse 16, Jesus, Jesus makes a prophecy about, about what's going to happen regarding sheep and shepherds, about how he is the chief shepherd. And in John 10 and verse 6, he says this, he says, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will hear my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. That's the foundational truth that we have to understand is ultimately we have one main shepherd, one chief shepherd. He is the higher authority. He is above our local shepherds here and we hear him first. 
Brothers and sisters, our local shepherds do not get our first allegiance. They do not receive our blind loyalty, and they should not receive thoughtless devotion. Certainly we should be loyal, but it should not be blind. And certainly we should be devoted to them, but it should not be without thought, without, without, without thinking about it. Because we submit to a higher authority than them. We submit to Christ, the chief, the, not the chief shepherd, I'm sorry, the chief shepherd. And I think it's important to mention that. Because our elders, our local shepherds, like any other man on the face of the planet, they are imperfect men who are capable of making mistakes. They are capable of choosing the wrong thing. That can happen. I don't think that they are, but they are capable of that. And so we need to recognize that even, even, even our local shepherds, as wonderful as they have been, as wonderful as they are, and, and even though they are supposed to be the examples who are leading us to become more like Christ, we need to understand that they may, they are capable of departing from that in that you and me as sheep that belong to Jesus are still responsible for heeding the voice of the chief shepherd, even if our local shepherds deviate from the path. Brothers and sisters, we do not get to sit back on judgment day and say something like, you know, Jesus, that may have been wrong, but the elders were okay with it. That's not going to fly on the judgment day. Our shepherds are trying to lead us in the right path. But they should be able to demonstrate every step of the way through the scriptures, that the path they've chosen to lead us on is the path that leads to Christ. We need to recognize, brothers and sisters, that we have a chief shepherd. His name is Jesus, and we should be his sheep first. But having said that, having said that, let's, let's dig a little bit deeper into this. Now that we've laid that foundation stone, I think it's important for us to discuss how, how we should act like sheep toward our local shepherds who exercise oversight among us here in this local church. So let me give you really quickly, let me give you four ways. Four ways that you need to act like a sheep toward our wonderful shepherds here at the Temple Terrace Church of Christ. And the first thing is this. I want you to see, first of all, that sheep should follow. Sheep should follow. I want you to notice again what Peter said in 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5, in, in verse 3, he talks about what a shepherd should be. He says this, Nor yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge, but proving to be examples to the flock. And there, there Peter says that a shepherd, one of their jobs is to be an example to us. They are to live lives that are worth emulating. Just as, just as real sheep follow their shepherd around wherever they go, we should be able to follow our shepherds around wherever they go. They are our example. They should be able to stand up in front of us and say what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 1. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. They should be our examples. And for that reason, our job as sheep is to follow them. That's what Christ wants from us. He wants us to follow the example that our shepherds set. Brothers and sisters, we have to understand that elders are not a special kind of Christian. They are not a special kind of Christian with special rules and special restrictions that don't apply to us, but only apply to them. That's not what they are. They are not simply Christians by whom we're supposed to be impressed by their spirituality. We're not supposed to sit back and say, well, that's something that elders do, but Christians don't have to do that. We're not supposed to sit back and say, well, elders should do this, but, but I can't be held to that standard. That's not the idea. The idea is that they're shepherds. And what do sheep do? They follow their shepherds. And that's what we should do. We are meant to follow. We are meant to be like them. Not to look at them like they're some kind of Christian superstar. But they are examples for us to follow. If they're supposed to act like shepherds, then we're supposed to act like sheep. And that means we should follow them. Is that what you do? Is that what I do? Do I follow my shepherds? Consider this with me secondly. Secondly, sheep should 
heed. Sheep should listen to the voice of their shepherds. I want you to go with me to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. In Acts 20, Paul, Paul, is, uh, Paul is sailing. He's sailing along the Mediterranean Sea. He is heading toward Jerusalem. And on his way to Jerusalem, he stops in the city of Ephesus. And when he gets there, he specifically calls for the elders in that church. He has a special, unique message for the elders who are exercising oversight in Ephesus. And he says this, Acts 20 and verse 28, specifically to the elders. He says, be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves, men will arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be on the alert, remembering that night and day for a period of three years, I did not cease to admonish each one with tears." Notice what Paul says specifically to the elders in Ephesus. He says, you need to guard your sheep. You need to protect your sheep. You need to guide your sheep. You need to see danger and warn your sheep and keep them away from trouble. And our elders have a special responsibility, just like a real shepherd has over his sheep, to protect them from any danger that may come along to guard and protect the Christians that are in their care. If they're supposed to act like shepherds, then we're supposed to act like sheep. And so if our shepherds here are supposed to protect us and guard us and guide us and keep us away from danger, that means that we need to listen to their voice. We need to hear, heed their call, obey their instruction. We need to be humble enough to listen to what they have to say. Can I ask you this morning, are you the kind of person who acts like a sheep? Are you the kind of person who actually heeds the voice of your shepherd? I wonder, brothers and sisters, what would happen? What would happen if, if one of our shepherds came up to you and said, you know, it, it, it's come to my attention that, that on the weekends, you've been, you've been out drinking with your friends. And, and honestly, as, as a shepherd, I really think that's dangerous. I think the Bible has a lot to say about that. And I don't think that's something you should be doing. If that were to happen to you, are you the kind of point person that would heed the voice of your shepherd? Would you listen to what they had to say when they tried to steer you away from danger? Or how about, how about this? If, if an elder came up to you and said, look, I, you've been talking a lot about the entertainment choices you're doing in your family, the TV shows you're watching, the movies you're watching, the, the music you're listening to. And, and honestly, I got to tell you, as somebody who's in charge of your soul, I really think that's dangerous. And I really think that you should make different choices because it's not good for your mind. It's not good for your spirit. Are you the kind of person that would actually, that would actually heed the voice of your shepherds? Or if an elder came up to you and said, look, I see that there's this, there's this rift in this relationship that you have. Maybe there's, there's a problem between you and another member of the congregation or, or a problem between you and your kids or maybe even a problem in your marriage. And a shepherd comes up to you and says, look, I've got some counsel for you. I really want to help you fix this problem and I think I, I know how to help. Are you the kind of person that would get mad and storm off and say, he, he doesn't have a right to tell me how to fix this? Or are you the kind of person that would heed the voice of the shepherd? Do we actually act like sheep who heed the voice of their shepherds? And you know, when, when we talk about stuff like that, we are very quick to say, we're very quick to say things like, well, elders aren't supposed to be dictators. They're not supposed to lord it over me that they're my overseers or that they're in charge. And that is true. Elders are not supposed to be dictators. But you know what? Neither are we supposed to be stubborn oxen. Immovable, unreasonable, unwilling to yield. That's not what we're called to be. Elders are not supposed to be dictators. But, but neither are we called to be prideful lions. Arrogant, puffed up. Always believing that we know better than everybody else. We're not called to be like that. We're called to be like sheep. 
We're called to be like sheep, animals that willingly pass under the rod of the shepherd's inspection. Animals that are silent before their shearers. If they are supposed to act like shepherds, we're supposed to act like sheep. We're supposed to be the kind of people who heed the voice of the shepherds. Is that what we do? Let me say this thirdly. Sheep should also feed. Sheep should feed on the nourishment that their shepherds provide. In John 20, in John 21, I'm sorry. In John 21, Jesus famously pulls Peter aside and, and he, uh, he, he, he asked Simon multiple times if, if he loves him. And this is a very famous passage. But, but also in this passage, he, has, he, he helps us see something very important about shepherds and sheep. John 21 in verse 15, the Bible says this. So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, shepherd my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Now, it doesn't become very apparent in the New American Standard translation that I'm reading from, but the actual Greek word there, all three of those words that, 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 that Jesus uses when he talks to Peter, uh, when he says, he says, tend my lambs, shepherd my sheep, tend my sheep. All three of those words all are the same Greek word, and it, it, it's a Greek word that means to feed. That's literally what Jesus is telling Peter to do. He says, if you love me, you will feed my sheep. And that's exactly what shepherds are supposed to do. Shepherds guide their flock into green pastures so that they can graze, they can eat, they can be filled, they can be nourished. And that's exactly what elders in a local church are supposed to do. That's exactly what Peter was supposed to do. He was supposed to feed the flock, to provide spiritual, spiritual nourishment for the flock. And brothers and sisters, if that's what elders are supposed to do, as shepherds, what are we supposed to do as sheep? Well, that means we need to seek and accept the nourishment that our shepherds provide. We need to be willing to feed on the food that they make available. And I think that idea has several, several very important applications. The idea that we need to try our best to feed on the nourishment our shepherds provide. You know what that means, brothers and sisters? That means that, means that if, my, if my shepherds decide, if they set it up so that they, they have a class, they have a Bible study that they want us to come to, then that means I need to try my best to be there. Because this is an opportunity. What happens on, on well, during normal times, what happens on Sunday morning before worship, when we have Bible class, that's, that's a nourishment opportunity. That's something our elders have decided we are going to do this so we can feed our sheep, so they can be nourished and grow, so they can be healthy. And that's what we're doing on Sunday night with Brian's class. And that's what we're doing on Wednesday night. We're having classes so we can study our Bibles. And our elders did that so, so the sheep can eat and be nourished and grow. We need to do our best to accept those opportunities. And that means, brothers and sisters, that if an elder comes up to me and they want to study something with me, I need to make time for them. And I need to be willing to do that. I don't need to make it hard on them. I don't need to avoid them because I'm scared of sitting down and having a Bible discussion with them. If they want to study something with me, I need to be there because they're trying to feed me. And that means, brothers and sisters, that if you look at yourself and you know that you're hungry spiritually, if you look at yourself and say, I want to grow more, I want to be healthier, I want to know more spiritually, then what you need to do is you need to go to your shepherds, you need to knock down their door and say, feed me. Let's have a Bible study. I've got this time. When can we meet together so that you can feed me because I'm hungry? That's something that you can do and something we should do. Because their job as shepherds is to feed us. And our job as sheep is to feed on what they provide. Shepherds feed their sheep. And so if they're supposed to act like shepherds, we need to make sure that we act like sheep. 
And let me say this fourthly. Fourthly, sheep should esteem their shepherds. And maybe at this point, <laughs> the illustration kind of breaks down. I don't know enough about animals uh, to know if sheep actually esteem their shepherds. And, uh, and I don't know a Bible verse that would prove that. But, uh, but, but, but just allow me to make the point, even if the illustration breaks down a little bit, the Bible clearly teaches that Christians in the local church should respect and esteem their elders. The Bible clearly teaches that sheep should be grateful and thankful for the blessing that their elders are. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, there's a great little passage about this that I want to read for you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 talks about how sheep should feel about their local shepherds. It says this, but we request you, in verse 12, but we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate those who diligently labor among you and have charge over you in the Lord and give you instruction and that you esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. And so the Apostle Paul tells the people in Thessalonica, he says, you need to esteem and respect and appreciate the men who have charge over your souls. You need to look at them like they're a blessing and be grateful for them because that's exactly what they are. They're a blessing. And I think it's important for us to think about also what, what that looks like practically. Practically, what does it mean to, to, to esteem my elders here? First of all, I think, I think that means that when I speak to them, I need to speak to them respectfully. I don't need to look at my shepherd like, like they're God-given punching bags. Somebody that when I'm frustrated or upset with what's going on in the church, I can just wail on them. No, when I'm, when I'm upset, I need to calmly and respectfully bring them my concerns. And as I do that, I need to give them the benefit of the doubt. And that means not only speaking to them respectfully, but speaking, them, speaking about them respectfully. When I'm, when I'm with my friends and we're talking about how things are going at church, I need to speak about my shepherds respectfully. And when, when I'm speaking uh, to my family about what's going on at the church or what, what we're doing, I need to speak about them respectfully in the hearing of my wife and in the hearing of my children. I need to speak to them respectfully and speak about them respectfully. And, and, and also, I need to make sure that I seek to praise and thank them. I need to seek to praise and thank them. Brothers and sisters, it should not be that the only time my elder hears from me is when I have something to complain about. Praise and thanksgiving makes a huge difference. It makes them, it makes, it makes them able to do their job with so much more joy. It makes their job easier. And encourages them in their work as shepherds. And so I need to make sure that I esteem them. If they are shepherds, then we need to be like sheep. And I'm going to contend that real sheep even esteem their shepherds. You, we can find about that later if we want. And so that's, that's what the Bible tells us. That's how sheep should treat their shepherds. They should follow, they should heed, they should feed, and they should esteem and let me say this as we, as we bring this lesson to a close. You know, it's funny that, that usually when you call someone a sheep, that's an insult, right? When I call you a sheep, that's an insult. Because, because there are many things about, about this animal that, that aren't very desirable. I mean, sheep are smelly, they're stupid, they're easily manipulated, they're gross, and they're completely vulnerable, right? There's no, there's no fighting spirit in a sheep. You're never going to see a team mascot be the sheep, Right? There's, there, there, there's not much desirable about this animal, right? But there is one attribute in sheep that God wants to see buried deep down in our hearts. And that's why the Bible calls us sheep. Because there's this one attitude, this one attribute that God really wants to see in us. He wants to see it in us and how we treat our local shepherds. And he definitely wants to, wants to see it in us and how we treat our chief shepherd, Jesus. And that quality is, is that sheep are submissive. Sheep are submissive. That's the one attribute that God really wants to see in us. That's the fundamental quality that Christ wants to see in his sheep. He wants to see submissiveness. He wants to see submission. We see that 
In Hebrews chapter 13, in verse 17, it says this, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account, so that they may do this with joy, not groaning, for this would be unhelpful for you. I want you to notice that phrase. I highlighted it up at the top. He says, obey your leaders and submit to them. The Holy Spirit commands us to submit to our shepherds, so long as they're not leading us away from our chief shepherd. And that word submit in English, it literally means, it means to put yourself under. That's what the word submit means, to put yourself under. And that's what we're called to do, to put ourselves under our shepherds. And if you look up what that Greek word means, that Greek word for submit, I don't go into the Greek very often because I don't speak Greek, but sometimes you find a golden nugget and that's it. That's this right here. That Greek word, that Greek word for submit, it is actually a Greek word called hypico. I don't know if I said that right, but it's a word that literally means to resist no longer. To resist no longer. And I love that idea. When you think about our local shepherds here, when you think about our chief shepherd here, to submit to them means to resist them no longer. Resist their example no longer. Don't tell yourself, that's just for them, it's not for me. Don't resist their example, follow their example. Resist their voice no longer. When they give warnings, don't push back. Heed them. Listen to their advice. Re resist their feeding and their nourishment no longer. If they give you a golden opportunity, grab hold of it. Take it. Because it will be good for you. Resist them. Resist them no longer. Is that how I treat my shepherds? Now, that doesn't mean, brothers and sisters, that it is wrong to ask questions. It is not. That does not mean that it's wrong to express your opinion. In fact, I think that's good. I think it's better to express an opinion than to keep it to yourself. It's not wrong. It's not unsubmissive to ask a question or to express an opinion. It's not even uns unsubmissive to have a disagreement about something. That's a matter of opinion. It doesn't mean that's wrong. It does mean, though... That as sheep in this flock, we ought to be humble and willing followers. It means that in respect to our shepherds, we put on a heart of submission, just like real sheep do. Because if they are supposed to be our shepherds, then we are supposed to be their sheep. That's what the Bible tells us, that Christians are to be like sheep. And so let's make sure we strive with everything we can to actually act sheepish in this local family of God. And not just to be sheep of our, of our local shepherds, but to be sheep of our chief shepherd. Also in John 10 and verse 11, the Bible, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. That's exactly what Christ has done for us. He's laid down his life for us. And he's told us, he's promised us that if we become one of the sheep in his fold, then he will give to us eternal life, and no one can take it away. And so the question is this morning, are you one of the sheep in his fold? The Bible tells us that if we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and we're willing to repent of our sins that caused him to go to the cross, we're willing to confess that belief before men, then we can be baptized in water to have our sins washed away, and we will become a part of his fold. As we're told in Galatians chapter 3, as many of you as are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Do you need to become one of his sheep today? A child of God today? We can help you do that if you'll come to the front while we stand and while we